good afternoon to all of you hope you're all safe and taking care of yourself and your family uh in today's class i'm going to discuss about one of the diseases that affects the nose it not only affects the nose but predominantly i should say affects the nose look at the terminology this is called as rhinosporidiosis i think the word gives you a lot of information rhino all of you are familiar with what is rhino now the moment we talk about rhino what comes to your mind i'm sure you think about this rhino only you know which you have seen since your childhood you know the typical uh, nose so r h i s ris means nose and what is this rhino have you used this prefix in certain diseases yes you can't say no rhinitis the common man also talks about rhinitis we talk about allergic rhinitis so you know about rhinitis so rhino a combining form meaning nose it is used in the formation of compound words so example rhinology what are the other examples rhinosporidiosis is one you have heard we teach you another uh, disease that affects the nose that's called as rhinoscleroma then read about rhinophyma all these are uh, rhinosporidiosis rhinoscleroma rhinophyma rhino uh, rhinitis rhinology so all these have rhino as the prefix so now we know what it means yes so the objectives of uh, today's uh, session or class i'm going to define rhinosporidiosis tell you what is the causative organism what causes rhinosporidiosis and where do we find this disease how man gets infected that is the mode of transmission then how do we identify this that is the clinical features and then how this disease appears grossly microscopy and how does it appear microscopy how, microscopically so we are, we are going to show you the slides uh, once you come back then uh, this later on another session you have to write down this microscopic diagram also so to define rhinosporidiosis we define it as a chronic granulomatous infection see two terminologies are very important it's chronic so chronic granulomatous infection that means this disease is characterized by formation of granulomas but not typical granulomas as seen in tuberculosis okay it's a chronic infection granulomatous infection of the mucous membrane caused by rhinosporidium seberi what is this rhinosporidium seberi the word this term spore means we know it is something related to the fungus yes it's caused by the fungus rhinosporidium seberi so by this name the disease was first described by seber in 19 in a 19 year old former in argentina and he had a nasal mass he had presented with a nasal mass it's an inflammatory nasal mass so this rhinosporidium seberi i told you the terminology says spore means a fungus so now see earlier this was thought to be a fungus now it is considered to be an aquatic protistan parasite aquatic parasite very special feature about this is rhinosporidium seberi has not been cultivated yet means so it's not cultured in the laboratory then where does it live the natural habitat is that is it it, it lives in water so reservoir water where do we find this disease then yes we do see it in india so even i have uh, seen few cases of uh, uh, 
the disease occurs worldwide and uh, see very important uh, to note here is but more than 90 percent of the cases are reported from India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. So when it comes to who are the people who are affected, the gender, men are more commonly affected than women. So very gross difference. Male to female ratio is 4 is to 1. Probably this is related to the occupation. Then most common in children and individuals aged 15 to 40 years. That means slightly younger age group. But how these people get infected? What is the mode of infection? This is local. That means by inoculation. The organism gets inoculated, traumatic in inoculation with the organism. Then who are the people who are prone? That means bathing. So look at these uh, children. So bathing in ponds or rivers or the occupation that involves use of stagnant water agriculture. So the organism easily enters the nose through nasal mucosa and then nasal nasopharynx, the most common sites that are affected. And what happens? So once the organism enters, then that leads to inflammatory process and we call this as chronic granulomatous inflammatory lesion and the infected affected individuals they present with nasal obstruction so it could be unilateral nasal obstruction or they may say bleeding through the nose epistaxis or they may say there is some foreign body sensation in the throat So other complaints are there may be itching, then rhinitis, sneezing, that is rhinorrhea, post nasal drip, I think so. Symptoms are related to where the lesion is. So most commonly we say nasal mucosa. That's why this disease was labeled as rhinosporidiosis. Now we know that this can affect other sites also. There are rare sites where we can see this infection. What are these rare sites? Conjunctiva, that is a lacrimal sac, then trachea, then bronchi. See from the nasopharynx it can go to, go to trachea, it can go to bronchi also, and then the larynx, genitals and rectal skin. So we have we have skin, seen one in the skin and one in the male uh, genital that is male urethra also and one lesion uh, affecting the eye. So rare sites also to be kept in mind though nose is the very common site. Then how does it appear microscopically? So the lesion is a flat nodule. You, you can see this looks like a polypoid uh, mass projecting. So this could be sessile or pedunculated. So if it's got a pedicle, we say pedunculated, no pedicle, sessile. Vascular, because it's an inflammatory process. So a lot of proliferating capillaries uh, would be there. So it is vascular. That's why it led to epistaxis also. Friable. The moment we touch it, you know, it breaks. So it may look like a polyp and on the polyp, it's not just a single polyp, it has a lobulated surface. But very important is, what can you see on this red lesion? The whitish spots. Okay, so we say white specks on the lesion. So these are the ones which represent the sporangia of the organism. And such lesion could be multiple or could be single. So they're very soft, red readily bleed when traumatized because it's the granulation tissue that is there with newly formed or forming capillaries. So this is the microscopy. Then what does the surgeon the uh, who sees this lesion? So he can make a diagnosis uh, clinically but how is this confirmed? So the ENT surgeon definitely tries to make a biopsy first. So on biopsy when the tissue is sent to us 
we process it and then make slides. So what do we see under the microscope to say it is rhinosporidiosis? So a classical picture that is shown here. So the lesion proper in addition to, addition to showing chronic inflammatory process in the background, it shows sporangia in different stages of development. So this is the sporangium, 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 sporangium all in different states. So we call them as sporangia. So where are they? They are all embedded in the stroma. Background what do we see? Inflamed stroma. That's a background. And if you look at the overlying epithelium, it's not very clear. I'll show you better pictures. So it's of respiratory type. And what happens to the respiratory epithelium when this chronic inflammation is there? What happens to the respiratory epithelium of the bronchus in a chronic smoker? So the epithelium undergoes metaplasia. So it has to sustain the chronic injury that is there. So what metaplasia do we see in the respiratory epithelium of bronchi? Squamous metaplasia. So similarly here in the nose if we take the lesion, normally we expect a respiratory mucosa there. But because of this chronic inflammation, there will be squamous metaplasia or just hyperplasia of the mucosa. And what do we see? Background, I said inflammatory cells or inflammatory or inflamed stroma. And what are the cells that are seen? So plasma cells, lymphocytes. That says it's a chronic inflammation. But these places, see this parangium has ruptured and the endospores are liberated. That means that's a fresh lesion there. Here we see neutrophils. Is it only neutrophils? No, this is something not related to common structure that is related to the body. So this is recognized as a foreign body and the body reacts by producing foreign body type of giant cells also. So what do we see microscopically? we see an inflamed stroma in the background with presence of sporangia in various stages of maturity. So two points here. So sporangia in various stages of maturity are seen in a background of inflamed stroma. So what did we talk about the stroma? We said the stroma has lymphocytes and plasma cells and at places of rupture there will be neutrophils and foreign body type of giant cells okay so then sporangia we said various form types various uh, stages of maturity or various forms what are they can you see here a smaller one one two three so the first is called as the young form so young form is also called as a trophic form they measure about 10 to 100 microns in diameter and they have a central karyosome, you can make out here. And amorphous lacy cytoplasm. See, look at the karyosome and amorphous lacy cytoplasm. Look at the wall, it is so thick and it is made of chitin. What happens? This matures into a form which is filled with sporangia endospores. So we call this as a mature form. So these are the younger, the trophic forms. Next is the mature form. So how is the mature form? It is grossly enlarged. It is larger. This is 100. This is about 300. Why 3 times? It's almost 4 times that of the trophic form. And as the cyst enlarges gradually, what happens to the nucleus, the karyosome which we saw? So it divides to form a lot of endospores. See all these endospores are, the, are of the size of RBCs and uh, they look like RBCs also but they are slightly bluish, bluish to pink. So two forms we have seen here, the younger the trophic form and the mature form. What happens to the mature form? It ruptures. Where does it rupture? Usually on the surface. I showed you a gross picture in the patient where we could see those whitish spots. Okay, So a pore develops on the wall through which the 
spore ruptures and all the endospores are liberated in the stroma. This usually occurs on the surface and from each of these endospores new sporangia develop. So when it is on the surface when these people swim or they work under uh, this water then naturally the endospores enter into the water. So new sporangia develop from such endospores. So this is the ruptured form then. What happens after it is ruptured? So all the endospores come out, they are liberated and the outer wall, we said the chitinous wall, so that collapses. See this appears usually like a semilunar shape or sometimes wall may be fragmented. Clear? We have learnt about four forms, trophic or the young form, something like this the mature form, the ruptured form and the collapsed form. This looks semi-lunar, see like a half moon. All these features you can very well appreciate in the slides that we show. It's just a repetition, various forms of sporangium. So the endospores, see this is the ruptured sporangium, endospores. That develops into a trophic form or the trophocyte which has a chitinous wall a lacy or hazy cytoplasm and uh, a karyosome and this goes on dividing forms lot of endospores this becomes the mature form and it ruptures giving rise to a ruptured form and again the cycle continues each of the endospores develop into a mature sporangium very simple so diagnosis here is we said this cannot be cultured, so it has to be by demonstration of these organisms in biopsy specimen. How? By microscopy, even just HND stain is enough, hematoxylin and eosin stain describes, I mean demonstrates this very well, otherwise if special stains are required, all of us know that one special stain we talk for uh, fungal infections is PAS, what does PAS stand for? per iodic acid shift. This stains the organisms magenta. See the color you can make out. This is magenta. If needed, other sp special stains could be done. So one is gomeris methinamine silver. So this is gomeris methinamine silver. It's a silver stain. Any silver stain, the end product is black in color. So all these appear black. Then another uh, special stain used to demonstrate certain fungi is Musi carmine. Here they appear pinkish. So we've learnt about rhinosporidiosis, the organism and the epidemiology, how man gets infected. So what is the gross of few symptoms and what few symptoms related to the nose that is when the lesion is in the nose then uh, how does it appear grossly and what is the mode of uh, diagnosis or the definitive diagnosis it's by microscopy so about microscopy the definitive diagnosis we said it is by looking at the presence of the organism which exists in several forms starting from the trophic or the young form the mature form the ruptured form and the collapsed forms and background with inflammatory cells. So what is the treatment of choice? So this depends on how the lesion and where the lesion is but see radical surgery with cauterization is supposed to be the mainstay of treatment. However, we should know that recurrences are common with this. So we have learned about uh, rhinosporidiosis. Uh, why I taught you this was, uh, it's a most commonly or frequently asked uh, short answer topic to you. And uh, you should know to draw a diagram also. 
This is one of the slides that is given to you for discussion in the practical uh, classes also. So we'll make you draw this diagram in the practical class. Okay, so you've heard about the theoretical aspect and seen uh, the microscopic features also which are very well understood I feel. Okay, I've, I've tried to show you all the pictures and uh, explain the same. So this practical class will make you write this diagram. Hope you have understood. Any queries you have, so please uh, message me on my WhatsApp uh, number or uh, you can even send uh, an email. Okay, so happy learning. Enjoy learning.